Welcome to another edition of Sparky Help and this time we're looking at types of main switch as found on the electrical installation certificate. As you can see here, now the main switch can be a main switch, switch fuse, circuit breaker or RCD. Why do we mention all of these things? Well not we, PS7671. Why? Because all of these could be used as your main switch within an installation consumer unit distribution board. Therefore, depending what you've got will depend what you're going to write in these locations. As a minimum, all test sheets must have the information as shown here. But some, such as NAPIT or NIC, may well require or put additional information in that's not displayed, which can be confusing. We're probably all familiar with BS60947-3, which is the standard that the main switches or isolators we tend to find in there. This sets out, as we see here, the different types of switches that manufacturers can make. It used to be there were two different types of main switch, a switch fuse or a fuse switch, which we can see is the symbols here. The difference between the two in a switch fuse, you actually switch the switch and the fuse is beyond it typically. Uh, or you have a fuse switch where the fuse is actually in the switch. The bit where this actually differentiates between the different types, as we've got down on the function on the right hand side, the manufacturers make different versions of each of their switches and it's down to you as the designer or the installer, selector, whoever it happens to be, to make sure you put the correct one in the correct location. They basically fall into two categories, those that are capable of switching on load or off load switches. So they say making and breaking current, so that's an on-load switch, or an isolator, which would be an off-load switch. So we just need to make sure what you've got happens to be either an on-load or an off-load device. We can see they use these symbols. If it's an on-load switch, they put the little circle in on there. If it's an off-load, it's a line to indicate it's an isolator. And often manufacturers will put these on their switches themselves. You may well have seen them, but not really taken much notice. Main switches come in many forms and sizes. Obviously, this one happens to be 100 amp, but it's a four pole. And if you look on the front of this switch, they use those symbols again, the little circles, which basically means it's an on load switch. And on the side, it says it's BSEN, it says IEC, but it's a BSEN 60947-3, which is the standard to which the manufacturer happens to have made it, being a 100 amp in this case. If you look underneath that, you can see, and I'll just point it out if you can see it here, it says AC22A. More of that later, you've probably seen it. We'll have a look to see what that actually means. Where would I want to use a four pole? Well, where you definitely have to use a four pole, isolator as a main switch is a three phase and neutral TT installation. If you're not sure what TT is, go look at my video on earthing systems and that will hopefully jog your memory. Why do we have to put a three phase and neutral four pole switch in? Because the regulations state in a TT installation you must break all live conductors and remember this includes the neutral. But you could equally use these in any other three phase and neutral installation. It's just not a regulation requirement. So you could get away in all the other types of three phase installation. You could get away with just a three pole switch. And many installations I've come across have just that. But it doesn't mean that's what you must do. And this one then is a 63 amp. It's a 400 volt AC and it has this AC22 made to the same standard as the one on the left. And if you note, it has the same isolator symbol if we look on here as we did on the four pole one. So we could have a three pole isolator or in this case, a double pole 100 amp main switch in this case. All of these are made to the same standard. Why do we put double poles in? Well, our regulations state that any switch by an ordinary person must be capable of switching both live conductors. So hence we put a double pole switch, or the manufacturers tend to put a double pole switch in the consumer or distribution board that you're likely to use. We just have to make sure it's the correct current rating. Remember, all of these devices are not overcurrent devices, which basically means if you get a fault beyond it, 
they will not switch off. They are not fuses, they are not circuit breakers, they are just switches. The only way these are going to turn off is if you physically go up and switch them in one position or the other. Now we've had these numbers on the front, AC 22, B as an example. What do they all mean? Well, this one, as you probably would have guessed, means it's AC or it's a DC type switch. So if it's a DC, the manufacturers will make the contacts to a slightly different standard because of the nature of the current. The second number can be either a 20, 21, 22, or a 23 as a number. And we've got, in this case, it says 22. So it's switching of mixed resistive and inductive loads. If you look at a switch that says 20 on it, it's connecting and disconnecting under no load. So that is a pure isolator. So if you see AC20, it is an offload switch and you probably wouldn't want to see it as a main switch within installation because you'd want to be able to turn it off in the case of an emergency. What does the second and final letter on there, the set of letters, basically means A or B and this means a frequent operation or infrequent operation. No more elaboration on that, how what they consider infrequent or frequent. You'd have to go to the manufacturer. But I have looked, and it could be many hundreds, if not thousands of times, difference between each one. You, as the designer or the selector or the specifier, is down to you to make sure you check the manufacturer's information to make sure it's installed in the correct location. As we saw on the previous picture, we've got this particular one. It's a 100 amp. AC 22. Now we've got this in front of us, we can see what that means. AC means obviously it can switch an AC current. 22, looking down the bottom, switching of mixed resistive and inductive loads, which covers the vast majority of installations. And A means it's for frequent operation, so perfectly acceptable in the vast majority of installations. The other one you could have had, it could be an RCD. We'll look at BS61008. This particular one by this manufacturer is a 100 amp RCD. So RCDs only pick up on earth faults only, or an imbalance between the line and neutral in this case. So this one is a 30 milliamp, and it has this one on, this symbol on the front here, which basically means it's an AC type, which is very common, but probably not going to be used as time goes on. And we've replaced most cases by these, as this will become standard, I should imagine. And this is a Type A RCD. This one happens to be 100 amp again, but this one's is 100 milliamp. Other milliamps are available. So this is a Type A. What's the difference between the two? This one will pick up DC currents as well. And lots of our installations that we install now have DC equipment. So, for example, some tumble dryers or washing machines have inverter drives in there, which basically means they turn AC into DC, back into AC again to give them the variable speed motors within it. Well, that, because it's swapping and changing the, the frequency back from AC to DC and vice versa, if you have a fault on those particular appliances, they may not trip out the RCD on the left, but the one on the right would disconnect because it can pick up those DC fault currents. Another type you can have is this particular one, and this one shows it's an AC, but it's got an S after it, and this S means selective, it means it's time delay. Why would you want a time delay? Well, if you have two RCDs in line with each other, so let's look at the two on the left. If we put the 100 milliamp first in line in a circuit, and then we put a 30 milliamp downstream of it and you had a fault, basically you would get a race between those two circuit breakers of a fault of negligible impedance. If you had a fault to earth, both of those devices would try to operate at exactly the same time, which could mean you take out half the building or all of the building. So what we would do is we put upstream as a main protective device, you would probably make it a time delayed one. Therefore, if you have further RCDs, such as additional protection, so a 30 milliamp further on downstream, what would happen under fault conditions, the 30 milliamp would go, leaving the rest of the installation on because this 100 milliamp one is time delayed or S and as it says on here the manufacturers state that it will go between 130 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds in time. 
or you could actually have a four pole RCD and this one has an AC type again 100 amp 100 milliamp so this would be a three phase and neutral RCD so all of these could be your main switches as shown on the electrical installation certificate remember again these are not overcurrent protective devices these only pick up earth faults or imbalances between the live conductors themselves so these will not disconnect between short circuit or overload situations circuit breakers we could put in and this one if you look up here this is a different british standard so this is not your bs60898 these are 609472-2 Circuit breakers come in various shapes and sizes. So these are your MCCBs. So this is your MCCB, and this is a three-pole circuit breaker come in all various shapes and sizes. Or you could have a four-pole circuit breaker, and these are often adjustable. Not always, but they're often adjustable, so you can set them to this one in the centre here is 100 amp, but you could set it to 90, 80, or 70 with a dial underneath, and you can adjust its settings. Or, in larger cases, you might have an ACB. An ACB, standard ratings, and they go from 400 up to 1600 amps in standard cases, but they can go much larger. And if we look on here, an ACBs and circuit breakers in general, they have two different types. So you've got the 60898s, which is the standard breakers, and you can see there they go 6 to 125 amps, and their braking capacity is up to 25,000 uh, amps. And then you've got the 60947-2s, which we were just looking at. They range from 0.5 amp, in this particular case, to 6,300 amps, and they can have a braking capacity up to 150,000. They could also different tripping characteristics and they give typical uses for each of these to be used within or you could have a switched fuse so here's this is a switch fuse or this was actually is a fuse switch this is eaten formerly mem and when you throw this switch these fuses in the center actually make the switching process so you can put bs88 type fuses in there of various different types and sizes and this would be whatever the rating of the switch is up to so this this is a 100 amp switch then obviously up to 100 amp or you can have this one which is a bs88-3 80 amp fused main switch which could be used and installed within an installation so if you've got either of these then this is what you're basically going to be writing down and the information relating to these remember these will be over current protected devices so under fault conditions these particular devices will switch off. So hopefully now when you see this on the electrical installation certificate, when you see main switch, switch fuse, circuit breaker, RCD, hopefully this will give you a better understanding what to write in. hope this has really helped. Please, please, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.